Hey everyone. So I have had this water heater here for maybe a year and a half since we installed it and for the first time I think I should give it a flush. It's recommended you flush a tank water heater about once a year. It prevents sediment from building up and causing damage inside the tank, especially since we have a well, there might be a lot of sediment. But this water heater is very hot. I want the water that we're going to take out of this to be pretty cool because the only low spot where we can actually get it out without pumping it would be we're going to use a little hose and we're going to send it down into the sump pump pit and right out to the frog pond. There might be a little bit of discolored water, but it's just a little bit of rust that may possibly come out of it. So we'll set up a little hose. But the first thing I want to do is shut the breaker off for this electric water heater and allow it to cool down. If I was to do that, I would have to wait nearly a week for the water to be cool. This thing is so well insulated, every time I go out of town, I shut the breaker off to try to save power. I've come home four days later, and this thing has still been hot enough to burn you. It's very well insulated. An electric water heater requires a secondary shutoff other than the breaker if you cannot see the breaker box from the water heater. Because if a technician was in here working on it, anybody could flip on the water heater from that panel there. You see the panel is around the corner, and if someone was working in here, they could turn it on without you noticing. So it requires a secondary shutoff up there that the technician would shut off before messing with it. Now, because it's only a year old, we are not going to touch this right here. This is a nanotube, I believe you call it. It prevents corrosion inside with a chemical reaction. So we're going to go ahead and shut the breaker off. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to take a shower. And then this thing should be just lukewarm after we run this thing down. It's only a 30-gallon water heater, which means you maximum get a 30 minute shower out of it before it cools down. But it's got a fast recovery, I've noticed. This electric water heater is also the biggest consumer of power in the house. Literally half of the electric bill is running this water heater. Electric water heaters are the cheapest to buy, but the most expensive to run. Fuel oil are the most expensive to buy, but the cheapest to operate while propane is somewhere in the middle. So let's go shut the breaker off. So out here, we got the panel in here. See, I have marked things that I wanna shut off when I'm not here. That's the water heater right there. Like I said, I, can, I could come back here four days, it's still hot enough to burn you. I could come back here over a week later and it's still pretty warm. All right, everyone, so it's the next day. I actually just went ahead and took a shower. It's now been over 24 hours, and if nobody told me, I wouldn't even have known this thing was off. It's still just as hot. It barely lost any heat in the past day. Like I said, I can go days with this water heater off. So now what we're gonna do, the breaker is still off. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is, right here, I wanna open the pump pit. This is the only way the water can leave. We don't have any other drains in here. Nope. So I'm going to disconnect this. This right here I use for adding water to my frog pond. I go ahead and I just put the end of that inside that pipe. And it looks to be long enough that we will be able to come over here and just put it right here onto the drain of the water here. go at some point also we should probably give this thing a test huh we can do it right now see that this is the emergency relieve that was pretty easy because this machine is less than two years old this should be tested annually and for some reason if it continues leaking after you've let off it, it means this needs to be replaced because it could be dangerous. If this pressure relief isn't there, it means this can explode, potentially. You see, I had it properly plumbed because sometimes when these get old, they start leaking. 
In case it leaks, it just goes right into the ground. See, it's just pipe just goes right into gravel, so it can not flood the basement and cause mold if I happen to not notice it slightly leaking for whatever reason. All right, so we want to keep this valve on. Now I'm going to walk upstairs to a high point and open some faucets. I'm stupid. I got to shut the water off, but I don't want to keep running up here. I'm just going to leave it on for a second. And this is my main shutoff, which I just remembered I'm going to have to get that replaced. For some reason, when this is in the middle position, look at this. Why does it leak? That's way worse than it was. Yeah, I'm going to call the plumber. I, I actually called him when I first discovered that, my plumber, and he was on vacation. He told me to wait. i got to give him another call tomorrow morning. I want to try to get that fixed quickly. So, now that the water's off and the faucet upstairs is open, we just broke the vacuum so we can open this and drain the water heater. Don't ever attempt to do this when the water heater's on, despite if it's gas or electric, because you can burn out the... All right, do I need a wrench for this? It's some weird, cheap thing. I'm going the right way, but it's not turning. Why? I gotta get something. All right. Right here, that'll work. I guess they made that of plastic because any reason to be cheap, most people will never even touch this. Is that, is that stripping or something? Is it opening? Or am I breaking it? What the heck? Maybe I need a screwdriver? This is a... I've never seen a valve like this in my life. All right, I guess. Here we go. Open. It's leaking a little bit of water out of the valve stem, but that should not be a problem. I forgot to put this down here. What's it look like? It's clean, that's a good thing. But you guys just wait to what we're gonna do. That now has to drain out 30 gallons of water, so this is gonna take a little bit. I bet it's still pretty warm. No, it's not. Interesting. So the water's still coming out hot, but I'm not 100%, I'm not a plumber, but I think a water heater has different sections. That's why it, it doesn't immediately start falling in temperature even though you're using it. All right. I'm feeling it because I want to feel if there's sediment in it, which is very probable. But I showed you on the top last night that compartment. That's actually a sacrificial rod, the thing I was showing you. It, it deteriorates itself instead of the rest of the tank. That's what I couldn't think of. All right, so that's got 30 gallons to go. This water looks very clean, very little sediment. But we're going to come back in a couple of minutes. Just wait for this thing to completely drain. That water's just going outside, being discharged. Listen to those cool bubbles inside the water heater. Oh, something fell over in the other room. That was scary. I'm back upstairs. Listen to this. There's a lot of air being sucked into the system right now. If I didn't have this faucet open, it would, would not be coming out of there or barely dribbling out of that tank right now. I can't believe how long it takes for that tank to empty, but I am using a washing machine hose, which got a tiny diameter. It's almost empty, though. I touched the tank, and it's starting to move now, meaning it's very light. We'll come back up here and shut this off as soon as it's done. Finally, after 25 minutes, it has finally stopped trickling out of the water heater. And we are back upstairs to shut that off. Back downstairs. Now we're going to shut this one off right here. There we go. That one. What the heck? That's a very tight valve. I hope that doesn't start leaking. Now we got to go down and... There we go. And now you see, it can't fill up. Because we got to go back upstairs to turn that valve upstairs on so all the air can be pushed out of here. This is pressurized now.
but it's just full of air. If I go turn it on, we're going to ruin this water heater because there's no water in it. We'd burn it out. I just did that because now we have this thing to play with. We're going to send a little burst of water in here to get any sediment that might be sitting in the bottom out. We'll leave that on, let that run for a couple of minutes because now it's flushing out. And you see, look at it, it's brown now. I feel it, there's particles in there. That's why we're doing this now. Look at all these particles we're flushing out of here. It's like gravel, look at that. I bet those are pieces of the diode just falling apart. Yeah, look at this. Grime, so much grime coming out of this thing now. You can't really see it much, but I feel it on my hands. It feels like sand. Gross. Maybe we'll even run back upstairs and open that again to make sure everything comes out. I don't think it's necessary, though. But some people don't do this often. They would let this thing go for, like, the water heater's whole life without flushing it. To the point the sediment builds up so much, it's so deep, that if you go to open the drain plug, it won't even come out. That's how plugged it is. It's just buried in sediment. I'm still feeling some stuff coming out, but it's slowing down. I think I'm going to let this run like this for maybe five minutes or so before we do anything. Now, the, the water can only come into the tank as fast as it's coming out, so it's not going to be able to really get rid of the air at the moment. That's why we got to go back upstairs, open that faucet again and let the water fill the tank up until it starts coming out upstairs. Then you turn the water heater on so you don't burn anything out. I'm still feeling like sand coming out of that thing right now. That's why I turn it back on, purging it out. Everything's just stuck at the bottom. Draining it is not gonna do much. This is, I'm still feeling stuff, amazingly. But you see, the water cleaned up very fast. You saw how filthy it was just for a couple seconds. That's a good thing. There's not a terrible amount in there. Maybe after five years or so, that's when I'd go ahead and maybe change the diode. This water's actually very, very freezing coming out of the well. You know, I was just at my mom's house who lives in a city, and I couldn't believe how hot the tap water was coming out of the system because it's not being pumped directly out of the well. All right, I'm still feeling things, but barely anything. We'll let this run for like another minute and then I think we're done. Yeah, I'm barely feeling anything coming out right now, barely. And the weird thing is the sediment that was coming out of here, I would describe it, it feels like sand, but slimy sand, like there's grime growing all over it. All right, I'm still feeling things, but they're very far and few between. Very far and few between. We'll let that run a couple more minutes as it is right now. All right, it's been a couple more minutes. I think we're done with this at the moment. So we're going to come back over here, and we're going to, just for the moment, shut that off. You hear the water? It's still blasting out of there because this is kind of pressurized now because... The, yes, this is still full of air, but the pressure that coming out of the pressure tank here actually pressurized the air in there, and now it's pushing everything out, if you get what I mean. This is like, it's pushing, this is acting as a pressure tank basically right now. That's why everything's still coming out at the moment. So I guess we'll let it keep doing that, get that out. That's not going to last long. All right, that water's just about stopped. I saw a video on YouTube the other day. This is an insulated screwdriver for doing electrical work on live wires, potentially. Now, this... I saw a guy on YouTube, he had this machine, it grabs onto the metal right here, and it dips it in water, and it'll arc anywhere where there might be a hole. It detects any break in the insulation. I thought that was really cool. So, the guy to test it, he made a hole in it, so it could arc, and... I thought that was kind of funny, but based on the comments, nobody understood what the test really was. All right, see, that's just about stopped. That's just the pressure that built up from the water. You know, because the water was coming in faster than it could leave through this narrow hose. So it compressed whatever air was in the tank, and now it's pushing everything out. I think we're good enough. Let's go over here and 
could shut this back down. Yep, this was my first time ever flushing a water heater. Ever. Yep, I always knew you were supposed to do it every now and then, and I wanted the experience of doing it. I've known people, such as my mom, her water heater was installed in the 90s. It was never flushed once. And it had a 30-year life. It just blew last year. Just blew last year, that water heater. It, well, it didn't blow. The bottom of it started rusting out. She got lucky. It could have exploded and flooded the whole basement. But no, it was just dribbling out of the basement because it rusted out after 30 years. Now we're going to turn this thing back on. You see, it's filling. But as it's filling, it's pressurizing the air in there because every faucet in the house is shut. It's pressurizing the air to the pressure coming out of my pressure tank, which I believe is about 60 PSI. So we're gonna run back upstairs now. I expect this to be violent. Oh! <laughs> uh, we gotta open the hot water one. That's the one we really need. Look how gross and nasty the water is. Oh! Oh my gosh. It's gonna do that until the pressure tank is full. It's about 30 gallons of water. That is loud, ear piercing. That water was gross. We gotta flush every pipe in this house. Nasty. There is so much air coming out of there. That's why it's coming out crooked like that. It doesn't do that normally. There's just so much air coming out. That is actually loud. That's actually hurting my ears. Oh my gosh. At least it's running clean now. That nasty water here only came out for a couple of seconds. We don't need this one open, right? Not now. We'll do that again after. It drained every pipe in the house earlier. So we're gonna have bubbles in every fixture we gotta get out of. Except maybe the basement. We'll go around and see. How long does it take 30 gallons to fill into a tank? I'm pumping at eight gallons a minute my well, and that tank down there has full water. This is a big diameter. It shouldn't take long. Like what, four minutes at the most? Not a big water heater. When I first got that water heater, I had it on 120 degrees. Ah, there we go again, gross. Remember, everything in the tank is kind of stirred up. That's just telling me next time maybe we should flush it a little bit longer. See how it's still coming out crooked like that? That's telling me that there's still a lot of air coming out. I don't know why it took a little break. I have no idea. It's coming out bad, look at that. If my hand wasn't there, this would be all over the floor. So glad I didn't walk out of the room. And it's going hard, and this water's freezing. I can barely keep my hand there for long. It's numbing, very numbing cold. Absolutely freezing water coming out of there. I don't see why we can't turn it down a little bit. Oh, uh, I think it's full, look. No more air coming out, I think we're done. But that just taught me there, because I'm gonna do this yearly. Next year, I think I better do what I did a few times. You know, with that valve, keep giving it little flushes. Because obviously I didn't do it enough, unless that nastiness you saw right there was on the walls of the tank, which would, you know, be inevitable. As it's filling back up, it's just showering it. But again, I could have flushed that. But my first time, I'll learn better next time. Any air in this one? I think we're good. I think that tank is full now. Go around and give everything else a hit. Yep, here we go. It had a little gulp of gross water. Is that it? Anything on the cold side? Probably not. Coming on into the basement. Anything gonna happen here? 
Yeah, a little bit. Any plumbers in the comments know why this commercial sink faucet might do this? When I turn it on, it slowly shuts off unless it is open absolutely all the way. I turn it up more, you'll, well, now that's open a little more, right? We mix it with this. Something in there is moving because if I'm washing my hands, you can feel it getting a little warmer, getting a little colder, getting a little warmer, and I don't know what causes that. I know it has to do with the faucet, but I'm just not sure because I'm paranoid. Just making sure it's full because I know how much give it would have if it wasn't full. That thing is full. We're going to go turn it back on. And boom, it is on. Within a minute, we should hear a lot of bubbling going on as those filaments start heating up. Seconds later, you can hear it in there. You can hear it sizzling. It's heating up. And it will be fully recovered and heated up in about 20 minutes. And I'm going to maybe take another shower. Hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching. And have a great night.